And joining us here in the studio, the president, CEO, and co-owner of the Phoenix Coyotes, Anthony LeBlanc, is here. Good to see you. Oh, great to see you guys. How are you? Second uh, time joining second us Second time, on the show. but first time live and in person, so yes. it's great to be here. Thanks for stopping by. Give us the state of the Coyotes, the health of the franchise. How's everything going? Things are going well, as you indicated. We're in the, the, the thick of the playoff hunt. Uh, of course, Monday night was a little uh, disconcerting for us uh, to see uh, our starting goaltender, Mike Smith, go down. But it was great to see the team react the way they did last night in Pittsburgh. Thomas Grice came out and had a great game. And, and I think we really went back to playing a Dave, T Dave Tippett style of hockey, a good defensive style of hockey. And, and hence, we, we got the two points we needed. You and uh, your, your ownership group, what a... What a, I don't know if it's a struggle, but it was a journey to end up owning this franchise. When you think back on it now, what do you, what do you remember of it? Because there was all those town meetings and there was just a lot of things that went on, but in the end, you were able to get the franchise. When you look back on it now, I mean, it's probably a little dizzying. Yeah, dizzying. It was a bit of an odyssey, uh, but we were able to get it done. I, I think we, we had to be patient. The, you know, perseverance uh, certainly uh, was a good thing, uh, but we, we always felt it was the right thing. We always felt it was a, a really interesting franchise. Uh, we thought that, and we still think that this is, uh, you know, uh, hockey in the desert makes sense, and we always wanted to be a part of it. So we were excited we got it done, and we, we are grateful. I mean, we, we had to sit through more city hall meetings than yeah. we ever anticipated, but we're very grateful for the relationship and the partnership we have with the city of Glendale and obviously the partnership we have with the National Hockey League. What's something or some aspect of being an owner that you didn't expect? Something maybe that surprised you so far? Uh, well, first and foremost was seeing our starting goaltender go down on Monday night. <laughs> I certainly wasn't prepared for anything like that. Um, you, you know, overall, it's, it's been pretty much what we expected. Um, you know, the highs are, are higher than we expected and the lows are, are pretty low. I mean, we've, we've gone through some ups and downs as a franchise. Uh, but at, at the end of the day, all of us in the group are, are you know, significant hockey fans. Uh, so we're, we're really enjoying the ride so far. How about the things you're doing to try to embrace fans down there and bring fans who maybe haven't been out to a game out to Glendale to see a game? I know you're doing the tailgating thing on the weekends. What are some of the other things you're doing to try to bring fans out there and get them involved with hockey? Well, we understand that there's been a, a rough four or five years mm -hmm. for the franchise where people, they were, they were hesitant to, to really commit to the franchise. So first and foremost, we wanted to get, a, you know, get out there that this franchise is here to stay. Uh, and we did that in the early part of the year. But what we're trying to do now is just engage with the fans and, and engage with, with people who may be in Phoenix on a more seasonal basis mm -hmm. uh, to get them out to the games. And we're very encouraged with what we're seeing recently, in, in particular, in very recently in regards to attendance. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Florida in the building last week which is typically not one of our biggest draws and, and we you know two thousand seats off of a sellout so okay. that you know those those things are very encouraging yeah and more sellouts we see over all attendance over a thousand per game so that's uh, very good how about the the name change we know next year arizona coyotes and uniforms everyone wants to know about the jerseys <laughs> and all that we talked with you at the very start of the season but just give us the update on that right. moving forward now yeah so the the name change will go into effect after the conclusion of this this season uh and we didn't feel it was appropriate to go through a you know a wholesale change of the uniforms at least this season mainly because we didn't appreciate the time frames that are required to go through that yeah. you know that working with your your uh, manufacturers and working with the league uh, and quite frankly we want to work with our fans and, and get a lot of feedback on what they would like to see uh, so while this season's changes will be pretty nominal it'll be changes on the shoulder patch I think it's fair to uh, expect that there'll be some more significant changes in the seasons after you get involved with something like this I got to imagine you've been a sports fan because I don't know why you'd want to buy a sport team if you haven't been a sports fan but what is it like to be in that box as an owner watching things you mentioned about the other night with the Mike Smith that's the the negative end of it when you see something like that right. happen, but what is it like to be in there on a night-to-night -night basis when uh, sports is such a it's such an up-and-down thing? Yeah, I, I'd say that the the emotions are amplified. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, when when you know the ups are ups, mm -hmm. uh, but when when we lose, you you really feel it. And one of our one of our guys, Jim Foss, had a line the other night, which I don't think he coined, but it certainly mm -hmm. felt uh, appropriate. And it's uh, you hate losing more than you like winning, and that's how I felt the other night when we we let the Boston game slip away, mm -hmm. uh, and then of course Monday night against uh, against the Rangers was another tough one. But then, as I said, seeing last night. Uh, that was just a you know euphoric to see us come back and battle and and beat such a tough team such a talented team like pittsburgh in their own building can we get your background again just for those who missed the segment i think we talked to you in october but just tell us how you started to love the game of hockey well i'm a, a good canadian boy grew up uh, <laughs> most of my uh, growing up years was, was in thunder bay ontario and in the past 20 years um off and on based in ottawa so i've been a long time ottawa senators fan uh you know i kind of joke with people and no disrespect to my friends in ottawa i'm glad i have another favorite team this year uh <laughs> you know I, I certainly hope, you know, wish them the best uh, as they come down this stretch, but they're in for a tough go. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I got involved.
involved uh, as a, I, I like to refer to myself in the group as the professional fan. Uh, we have guys in our group who have played uh, played the game at, at a professional level. We've had guys that have played collegiately. Uh, I like to refer to myself as the professional fan. Let me ask you this. I'm always interested in, in this group of owners. We know about the group of coaches, the group of mm -hmm. players, group of managers. But what about the group of owners? Do you guys interact with one another and, and ask for advice from one another? Because you're in 30 different markets, you have 30 different circumstances, but there's a lot of shared things that go on as well. How much are you in touch with the other owners in terms of just maybe looking for advice as someone new to the club? or uh, just trying to pick their brains a little bit? Well, it's a great question, and it's really the reason that I go out on the road. I don't go that often, but when I do, I tend to go to cities where, you know, there's teams that I think could, could help us. Now, of course, New York, we, we tend to come to more so for, for league meetings mm -hmm. next door. But, uh, for example, two weeks ago, going down to, to Florida and to Tampa uh, to meet with those guys, because very similar t types yeah. of markets, similar circumstances, similar challenges. Uh, I would say that, you know, the, the sharing of information between, uh, on the management side, the non-hockey management side, it is pretty open. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned Ottawa. I'm good friends with Cyril Leader, the president of the Senators. He's been a great help in giving me ideas and tips and tricks. Same thing with other franchises that we've had the benefit of working with. And something unique and a sign of the times, an owner on Twitter, which I think is so <laughs> cool. We got some tweets here from some fans. How's that been, though, being on Twitter and uh, well, yeah, getting your thoughts out there? You realize as soon as you, you press that tweet button or send button that that is permanent, so you have to be really careful uh, and make sure you're doing it at appropriate times. Um, I view Twitter as a, it's a very good tool if used properly. It's a great marketing tool. Of course, you know, some people, for example, one of our players, Paul Bissonnette, has, has yeah. really built up a cult following on Twitter. Uh, I actually just noticed before coming in here that he had uh, tweeted something in a, in a way that we won't talk about on the air. Um, but um, it, it, it is a great tool, and, and we're using it. My, uh, one of my partners, George Gosby, is on Twitter as well, and he's quite active. Um, but we're certainly not the first. I, I'm, again, I mentioned Ottawa. I know Eugene Melnick is on Twitter, as is Jeff Molson up in Montreal. Um, you know, we, we try to use it. It's, and any, anything that's at our disposal to help us spread the word, we're going to utilize it. You got some questions? Yeah, Biz is the greatest. I yeah. <laughs> he, he didn't send any of these, though. Levi Christian wants to know, do you think the recent loss of Mike Smith and Ned can deeply affect your playoff hopes? I don't know if I'd say deeply. Uh, it certainly is an effect. He's our starting goaltender. Uh, he's a very big part of our franchise. But as I mentioned at the beginning, our franchise is built off of a Dave Tippett style of, of defense. It's a Dave Tippett style of coaching. And we feel that, uh, and, and last night was the proof, uh, Thomas Grice is a, is a tremendous tremendous goaltender and he came in and did a great job but the guys played great defense in front of him and we had some great offense so we're, we're very encouraged by what we saw last night JJ wants to know what's the biggest challenge in developing a fan base where most of the residents are transplants you know that's an interesting question but I think it's more of an opportunity because the reality is you know we have a number of fans that come down to the Phoenix area that are from other hockey markets so they are going to come to our building when their favorite team is playing I think the opportunity for us but also the challenge is ensuring we can get them back into our building when their favorite team is not playing and really turn the Coyotes into their second favorite team. You know I want to follow up just one thing there. I was in Dallas when the Dallas Stars came there and mm -hmm. they made a, a real effort to build the youth hockey programs Absolutely. down there. How important is that to you guys? I'm sure there's a a lot of kids that you know nowadays hockey is everywhere it's tremendously important and one of the first things we did when we took over the franchise it was actually Shane Doan our captain who reached out to us and and asked us to sit down to, to understand his thoughts because he has you know young kids that are involved in youth hockey in the Phoenix area we have already sat down with all of the the uh, the different groups that that are uh, hosting youth uh, youth hockey minor league hockey in the Phoenix area we've had conversations with the groups that manage the facilities that are in place and there is no question we have studied closely the Dallas model because I think they and you hit it on the head that's that's how you grow your future fan exactly, base. Yeah. So it is something we're looking very closely at. And real quick, last one comes from Skyler. What's your favorite part of being an owner of an NHL team? <laughs> oh, I'll be pandering. Being here with you guys. No. <laughs> No, you I mean the free tickets. <laughs> no, <laughs> the dome, no, yeah, that's, that is that's very, true. That's true. No, my favorite, my favorite part would would be the games. Uh, yeah. Being able to, for example, two nights ago, although we lost, getting to watch a team that I'm a co-owner of in Madison Square Garden was pretty special. Yeah, well, it's great to see you. Thank you very much for joining yeah, us thanks again. Thanks for taking and the time. Thanks, appreciate guys. It. Best of luck the rest of the season. I appreciate that. That is the president, CEO, and co-owner of the Phoenix Coyotes, Anthony Oblong. Kind enough to stop by, and we have a